entrepreneur with large amounts of risk, number one. Number two, with, I don't know, pretty big tax liability, and maybe some extra cash flow that you can use to better both situations by lowering risk and also hopefully lowering tax liability. Well, hey, I'm here to help you. My name is Kenner French. We're going to do this vast cast that we're calling a captive and introduction to help you, the business owner, the entrepreneur who might uh, have a big tax liability. Let's say, oh, Four hundred thousand dollars. Number one. Number two. You might have a whole bunch of risk and trying to minimize that risk. And also, you want to instead of giving money to an insurance company, you want to basically run an insurance company with our help, and uh, you know potentially keep the money so you don't have to lose all of it to the insurance company. Where, well, I'm here to help you. Once again, Kenner French of VastSolutionsGroup.com. We're doing this vast cast to help you know business owners who are in that plight of having a lot of risk and wanting to lower their tax life. But we're going to go over some items for maybe 45, 50 minutes to help you to understand and really, really gain detailed knowledge, a little bit more detailed knowledge of a strategy that you might have heard of, a captive or an 831B, and really want to learn a little bit more about. You might be a, let's say, a brand new entrepreneur who's killing it revenue-wise or an experienced one who needs a brush, brush up on well, the concepts of a captive, and we're here to help you. All right, I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to go over specifically, again, captive insurance. All right, here we go. Let's go over the slideshow. Okay, first and foremost, kind of the issue is, if you really think about it, um, you don't want to give money away to whatever, ABC Insurance Company. So, you know, a viable option, the IRS allows people to start up insurance companies. You got to abide by certain amounts of, uh, you know, uh, regulations. But man, if you can write a check for whatever, a million dollars to your own insurance company, sure, there's fees, man, you can totally lower your uh, tax liability and keep some assets. So what is an insurance company? It's a, you know, as I mentioned here, privately owned property and casualty or PNC insurance company. Basically, it's some would call it a, you know, self-insurance company. And uh, the nice thing about it is, is you kind of control what premiums you want to put into it. Even sometimes the amount relative to, you know, having an actuary, one of our actuaries who helps in that regard. But you basically get to customize your own insurance company. Now, I'm not saying you're going to run the insurance company, but you're actually going to with our help, you're going to basically, in effect, <laughs> run your own insurance company. But the nice thing is, is, well, we're here to help you. Um, and then here, you could see it insures risk of company in common with the captive's owner. So let's just say you have whatever, like me, 20 and 20 companies. You can put them all under one wrapper, if you will, and insure different elements or different components of risk as a result. So here, as you can see, the basic captive relationship here you have the common owner. Let's just say that's you. And then you have on the lower left-hand side, you have operating business. And on the lower right-hand side, you have your captive. So in exchange for premiums that your operating business writes to the captive, well, the operating business gets insurance policies. Now, over and above that, what risk protection do you have? Well, you're protecting yourself against, you know, viable risk elements. It's got to be a real true business risk. So you end up allowing uh, you as a business owner to protect themselves against any of that viable risk, right? And it could be any number of different types of risk because you're custom tailoring each coverage for your, you know, your, your, your company and the industry. And also, by the way, a nice thing is you're stabilizing uninsured loss expense. That, and that's a huge component. And at the same time, let's jump down to, you know, increased claims control because you get to really make specific what policies you're taking care of in this, your own insurance company. Now, what are the underwriting decisions you in concert with us or really with the, with the, um, the actuary, we help you to underwrite your risks um, and, and claims at the same time. So again, it's customized, everything's customized. And I'm not saying you as a business owner have to be intimately involved. That's what we do. We do kind of the, the overall wrapper around the insurance company because we have experience doing it. So you're not the one who's making those day-to-day -day, uh, decisions. As a matter of fact, sometimes you only have to be there, you know, once a quarter and at a minimum once a year going forward. So that's nice. It's not as though you're that involved in starting another company because hopefully you're doing your own, 
your own business, whatever that business is. Okay. Now, people ask about the domicile because sometimes that's kind of a consideration when it comes to insurance companies. Over 30 states have captive insurance legislation and more on the way. But basically, this is an old concept that's been around for a while, especially insuring farmers. So uh, generically, you pick a state and that's where you domicile the insurance company. The state has got to have laws that allow for uh, captive insurance or 831B insurance companies. And also you can go overseas. You know, you could go to whatever Cayman Islands. You know, Puerto Rico, uh, I guess that's, that is overseas, but it's a uh, uh, foreign territory. But anyway, um, the nice thing is, is you could kind of pick and choose if you want to go offshore, if you want to stay onshore, whatever has the best, really domicile, the best kind of laws for you. That's what we help in uh, determining for you which domicile makes sense. And here, if you're overseas, you pick a 953D election, which allows and it, it allows us to let the government know that, yes, you're starting an overseas uh, or an offshore domicile, I should say. Coverage considerations, you know, anything in this business, generally. It's not really personal insurance. It's anything that's business insurance, property and casualty that's owned in your business, deductibles and gaps of, a, of existing plans. So it's meaning sometimes they call it gap insurance, as a matter of fact. Um, um, premiums, they must be commercial. So you can't just again, have an individual policy. The premium can't be written from an individual. It has to be written from one of the um, one of your entities. So let's go over the specific types of policies. Yes, administrative action. Um, um, as an example, you know, something that happens at, at work that's administrative, there's a maybe an E&O policy as an example. Um, business dirty tricks. Let's say someone did something bad to you business-wise. Well, you can have an insurance policy for that. Business interruption. Who knows? Maybe we're going to have another pandemic. Hopefully not, but well, you could be covered. Uh, business reputation. Let's say someone comes after your business name. It's covered. Mm. I think a big one, which we don't really talk enough about, is audit insurance. If you're audited by the IRS, if you're audited by a state insurance commissioner, if you're audited by an industry uh, regulator, well, obviously, the nice thing is this insurance company can act as a backstop and help you out. Um, let's say loss of a key customer. Let's say you have a big customer who's giving you, I don't know, 50% of your revenue. You can help, well, lower the risk because you've got insurance on the backside of that. Um, what about, you know, a big one is advertising liability. Let's just say one of your advertising um, strategies doesn't work. You can have insurance for that, as a matter of fact. Let's say you're, you know, you're trying to apply for a loan, lender failure. Let's say you're trying to apply for a loan, and for whatever reason, you don't get that that loan or, you know, or they, even this, even if they say for, force majeure, they call the lender calls into uh, calling the loan. Well, the insurance can step up in that regard. So you can, it can pay for the bulk amount of the, uh, of the loan. So you don't have to come out of pocket, which that could obviously kill your business. That happened to a certain extent in 2008. And it really happened a little bit more sadly, you know, with the, with the pandemic. So anyway, there's a list of the policies that at least you should think about when it comes to a captive. Actually, even besides a captive, even if you don't use a captive or an 831B, you could at least go to your current provider, you know, the insurance company, you're writing a check and throwing it away. Um, you could at least talk to them about some of these policies. Now you're aware that some of, the, I was, uh, some of these policies exist. I was talking to one of our clients who um, didn't even know that he could have, as an example, lawsuit interruption um, policies. And yeah. And now he's getting one for himself, and then he's also going to get a, get a captive down the road. But at least he's taken care of. If there's a lawsuit, well, you know, the attorney's fees are taken care of. Plus, more than anything, the impact on his business will be taken care of because he's going to have lawsuit interruption. All right. Can it be a wealth management tool? Because as I said, you're writing a check. Instead of the check going to for insurance to, um, let's say, Liberty Mutual, let's say you're writing a check of a million dollars per year covering your rentals, your commercial building, instead of a million dollars going away, hopefully you won't have a claim, by the way, but if you have a claim, well, what then? Well, the insurance company takes care of it, but if you have no claim, what happens? Well, the insurance company keeps that check, that million dollars check, right? It is peace of mind, by the way, but at the same time, on the backside of that, if you started a captive, you ran a captive with vastsolutionsgroup.com, well, that million dollar check, instead of that going away to Liberty Mutual, in my example, you get to keep that money. 
We help you manage it. We help you run it as an insurance company. I'm going to make a note. It's very important to truly make the whole scenario run as an insurance company. There's a lot of the IRS is looking at companies, at people, at even promoters who are putting these together and not making a true insurance company. We will not get involved in that. We actually formally tell the IRS, we tell the regulators what we're doing so they see what we're doing. Now, why is that? Because we are proactive. We want the government to know that we are putting together a true to life insurance company. So the deduct the the premiums are deductible. And on the backside, we're living by the four pillars of insurance. Uh, so we are completely in the clear and completely in the clear. We don't want any of our clients to get in trouble. We don't want to get in trouble. So this way, by proactively going to the government, to the regulators, they know exactly what's going on. And plus, we won't be in the regulators really, really target because we're doing it the right way. Potential income tax reduction. As I mentioned, 831B, creating a small insurance company. Well, what does that mean? That's when you get your deduction. Just like you're writing a check to, I don't know, Liberty Mutual, you get a deduction, as I've mentioned a few times. But at the same time, well, it's nice because, again, you get to keep the money on the back side. You know, you don't have to pick it up as uh, as earnings, as a matter of fact. So that's why I say potential income tax reduction. Now, you have to pay on the growth. By the way, there's a lot of scenarios where it could be a really, really positive side uh, element, I should say, on the, on the back side because – You've put together an 831B. Each tax professional is unique as they're reviewing the tax savings. So what I would say is have your tax professional involved so they understand exactly what you're doing by putting together a captive. Because in some cases, they might not know anything about uh, how to put this together, and they might lose fact, lose notice of the fact that you get to save money in taxes by having a, a captive insurance company. So I would say if there if there is a need for you as far as on the tax side, please give us a, a, a holler. We want to make sure that you're getting your rightful tax deduction. You're getting your tax strategy taken care of because that's one of the very powerful elements of this. But now what I would say is the most important element of a captive is the risk reduction strategy. It really, really does not make sense to just do it for tax purposes. That's That doesn't make sense. You have to have as a primary driver, well, Tax, um, sorry, uh, risk mitigation. Okay. Now let's talk about wealth accumulation. Now, if you're, let's say, writing a check to, I'm making this up, Liberty Mutual for a million dollars, the nice part of it is you're getting basically tax deferred premium income. Now, instead of giving money to the IRS, what happens is, remember, you're not losing the money because you're not writing that check to an insurance company. Instead, what's happening is you're get you're you get to keep that. In your C Corp, usually a C Corp, in your company, company's name, what happens is hopefully because you're managing it, it's going to grow with our help, by the way, with our help, you're going to manage it. It's going to grow. And what's going to happen is you get tax deferral in effect. Very, very, very powerful, very powerful because, and I would say it's wealth accumulation because it's not going away to, you know, Liberty Mutual or ABC insurance company. Instead, what happens is you get to keep it and it hopefully will accumulate thereby what I call wealth accumulation, okay? Now, at the same time, asset protection. If you have that money that you've written, uh, I keep using the example of a million dollars. You have that money in a in a C corporation, as it's supposed to be, 99% of captives are in C corporations. It's hard to get at those assets. It's hard for asset, uh, well, you know, huh, I would say lawsuits, litigators to get at that that money. It's an insurance company. So that's one nice element because people believe me, there's people who, you know, they might see you're out there building homes, commercial buildings, big businesses. They want to get at your assets. It's a little bit more difficult to get at the asset because it's in a C Corp insurance company, that being a captive. Now, what I'm also going to say is there's some promoters who are out there saying, well, you know, there's the, you know, it's a hundred percent protected. It's not. No asset is 100% protected from the eyes of the government. I don't care what anyone says. Anyway, so that's worth noting, though. At least you have a higher degree of asset protection because the assets, in this case, a million dollars per year, would be going in a captive insurance company. Now, regulations. There are a ton of regulations, but that's why you employ us at VastSolutionsGroup.com. We have a specialist. We have a team who works on the regulations, keeping you really 
uh, regulate, <laughs> I, w- I won't say keeping you regulated, but really the company regulate to make sure that you're abiding by the regulations. Compliance is a very important component. Think of all the compliance. When you have the investment account, it's got to be ran as a, basically as an insurance company. It's got to be ran as a capital account, number one. Uh, number two, even the SEC, the SEC to a certain extent oversees the money, just like any other investment, right? Wherever you're invested, unless you're invested maybe in a non-qualified, whatever, real estate, obviously, you don't have to worry about regulations to the same extent for the SEC. State regulations, I'll say, yep, the state oversees these. But what I would say on the flip side of that, you have a number of different regulatory bodies making sure that you're in compliance. But the thought is, is, well, you're getting a huge deduction. So it kind of makes sense. If you're saving, like we have a client who's putting away $1.1 million, he's going to save, let's say in California, 400 and something thousand dollars. Let's say it's 400, well, let's just say it's $400,000. That's a huge tax liability for only the regulations of putting in, let's just say the regulation and the cost, uh, everything to put in the, put together the captive, let's say at the surface, it thousand dollars, whatever the circumstance is. It's worth it. I'll spend twenty thousand dollars if I could save four hundred thousand dollars. There's no doubt. But the flip side is it's going to take more time for regulation. But that's what we do here at VastSolutionsGroup.com. We help you in making sure you're in compliance, making sure that regula- regulations are met, and ma- making darn sure that nothing goes wrong. Because there's a lot of little things that could go wrong with captives, and if we're uh, helping you to stay in compliance, that shouldn't be an issue. Risk shifting, that's very important. You have to have a separate legal entity. As I've been mentioning, you have to have a C-Corp to uh, typically to uh, um, to have as the um, have a run as the insurance company. It can't be a propped up checking account because some some people just put together a che- checking account in the name of the company. It's got to be a true to life insurance company where you've it's been vetted. It's an insurance company. You know, in exchange, as I mentioned earlier, in exchange for the 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 premium the company that wants insurance gets insurance. And if there's a claim, the claim is submitted to the insurance company. Um, And and then on the, and the same time, there's the the battle to make sure that it's a true claim. And well, that's again, where vastsolutionsgroup.com comes in. Now, yes, it's a lot of work, but Hey, we get paid and we get paid handsomely for it, but that's to keep you in line. And again, if you spend $20,000, but you get to save $400,000, where before you were losing $400,000 to an insurance company or a million dollars to an insurance company, probably well worth it. Um, now I'm going to skip to, uh, I'm going to jump ahead because I don't want to run out of time here. Um, now this is important. This is a very important kind of picture. So you understand a little bit about um, how kind of the process for a captive here, you see at the top, you see the owner, that being you, you own a number of different companies. So you come to us, we're the consultant, we're the administrator, and then we work with either one bundle, one bundled approach of captive, if sometimes that makes sense, or at the same time, what we'll do is we'll work with each of the component elements of an insurance company. We wrap them into one. So there's, you're not the one who's working with all these different components, but we are. Does that make sense? So this is a pretty, I think a pretty understandable graphic of helping to understand the kind of the scenario, the really the structure of the overall process. And there you can see you have, you know, policy preparation, reinsurance pool if needed. You know, you have um, IRS and tax uh, and tax uh, filings as an example. You have, you know, accounting and audits. You know, you have everything kind of on the right-hand side so you can understand a little bit more about how captives uh, work. And in this case, it's an uninsured, uh, unbundled um, uh, insurance company. And then sometimes we have, put together where everything's kind of in one reinsurance pool and it's a little bit easier and a little bit cheaper, by the way. So in some cases for smaller ones, that works pretty darn well. Now, I want you to understand where are we getting this information? You can check on the IRS website. You can check on a number of different sources. We've got a number of different, um, a, a lot of different pieces out there as far as videos, audios, podcasts, et cetera, et cetera, outlining what a captive is, how to put them together, how to best use them in use cases. Now, I'm going to go over a couple of use cases as we talk about research, and just so you see that um, um, some of the elements we're going to talk about with these use cases will basically apply to some of these revenue rulings. So we have a client who's coming to us right now. He's got... um, 
he's been paying three hundred thousand dollars for, uh, and he's underinsured three hundred dollars for uh, premiums. Um, he's got a very large uh, real estate portfolio. He's also a doctor. So what's been happening is he's been writing a check. Actually, to be exact, to be exact, it's four hundred fourteen thousand dollars in re- in, um, in premiums. Every year he writes a check roughly for four hundred fourteen thousand dollars. It's gone. He hasn't had a claim. Um, and he's underinsured. He's got a lot of places where he needs some gap insurance to fill in the gaps. Now, let's just say as an example, he's, and no, he, not even as an example, he's going to do this. He's going to add some other policies. So what he's going to end up having is about a million dollars, truly a million dollar premium. So now what he has been, $414,000 is going to whatever, Liberty Mutual as an example, Right. Every year, $414,000, he gets a deduction. He loves that, which is great. But at the same time, Liberty Mutual is who ends up with that check at the end of the day. They manage the money in exchange for great coverage. Right? Again, it's underinsured. But the nice thing is, is let's say there's a huge claim. Liberty Mutual is on the hook. I don't know how long he's been doing this print. Let's say he's been doing the print for 10 years. Right? That, that adds up. Okay? And that's number one. By the way, number two, if you really think about it, Liberty Mutual has reinsurance and or they sell the policies that are serviced outside. Anyway, that's a whole nother argument. So meaning they're just taking the 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 premium and making some money on the on the backside, but that doesn't matter. So now let's say now we fill fulfill the gaps that he has. He's gonna end up having a million dollar check that's gonna be written, gets a deduction, let's just say it's four hundred thousand dollars. Okay. I don't know at the end of the day, because tax professionals are working on that right now. So he saves four hundred thousand dollars. At his in his scenario, for him, it's going to end up costing um, twenty thousand dollars to to set it up. Um, number one, number two, what's going to happen is uh, there's going to be a fee for the the premium, right? Um, and I, I believe it. No, I know uh, it's five percent for him. It's five percent, right? And that's worth it. So just to you know, just to set it up and the premium per year on an ongoing basis. Well, heck, think about it. He's saving four hundred thousand dollars, so he would have to spend in expenses four hundred thousand dollars, meaning his time and his and his and the fee, a lot of money for it to equal four hundred thousand. He knows that's not going to happen. Okay, at the end of the day, is he's getting tax deferral on that million dollars on that four hundred thousand uh, dollar corpus, plus on that million bucks. Let's just say because it's more conservative, let's say it gets a five percent rate of return. Right, and a million bucks per year, right? Think about that. Think about that. That's not bad. And at the end of the day, he just pays tax in his circumstance. He pays tax if his CPA is right on on, on the increase. He's going to be taking dividends after year two, but at the same time, he likes that because it's well, big tax deferral. He's gotten his um, um, risk mitigation taken care of, and then he's going to be working with us to manage the assets so it gets a rate of return that's pretty, let's say, conservative. But then again, it's better than losing it to, let's say, Liberty Mutual. So think of all the elements there in your circumstance. In your circumstance, are you writing a check every single year and losing control of it? Sure, you get the tax deferral, but you're losing control of that asset. It's gone, right? This way, you're still getting risk mitigation. Right, because you have to abide by all the insurance regulations. But the nice thing is, is you're not losing control of that asset. You can customize policies. You can um, you can lower raise the policies depending on the circumstance, right? And he he is going to be he's listening to us very very specifically. So we know that there's no risk of audit. Yeah, there might be a risk of audit, by the way. You just never know. But at the same time, we're letting the government know about what we're doing. All the regulatory bodies are going to know exactly what's going on in his circumstance because he doesn't want to go afoul of the uh, the regulatory bodies. Okay. So now what's another use case? So there's another client who has a ton of single family residences. And the nice thing is, is he wants it all bundled into one, one company. He's forming an insurance company with his buddy. So instead of doing that, he's going to form this as a silo. And then this is going to act as a backstop to all his his, um, uh, real estate assets. Because, you know, they uh, underwrite uh, or warranty, I should say. They warranty um, uh, appliances. Well, he can do that here. 
Okay. Does that make sense? So you can warranty appliances in real estate, or you can, uh, it doesn't have to be appliances. It could be a whole, you know, slip and fall. It could be a whole number of things that happen within the apartment buildings because he doesn't want to get sued. And, well, if he has this on the backside, this will help him. That's $600,000 of premium he's doing now. And he's looking to double it 1.2 million because they're growing, growing, growing. Okay. So there's just two use cases, which really it kind of makes sense for you to understand. The nice thing is the nicest thing is, is it's customized. Everything's customized. Let's say in year two or year five, let's say in year five, you want to close and stop the company, just like any other investment, you could stop the company. And what happens? Roll the money or really, I should say, just like you're closing any other company, um, few more regulations, by the way, but you're basically rolling over to you because you own the C-Corp. So now, the, the what I would say is the downside on that circumstance, you're closing it. So there's more paperwork, a little bit more rigor and roll than you would in a normal, closing a normal company. But the nice thing is, is you've had your own risk taken care of by your own insurance company. You've kept the assets, you've gotten the tax deduction, you've customized the policy. I think you're starting to understand probably by listening to this, what are the positive elements to a captive or 831B, you being an entrepreneur who's got a lot of risk and a lot of tax liability. So now let's go one, maybe one step further and showing you a little bit more of the research. Here you'll see, you know, there's different notices as far as the IRS goes, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you know, a lot of people are asking, and I'm going to kind of close the loop on the regulatory element. A lot of people are saying, well, wasn't the IRS a number of years ago going to increase increase the uh, number of, of, um, of compliance people out in the field? The answer to that is yes. The IRS, I think rightfully so, by the way, they're going to have regional, I would call them pods all over the country. They're going to go and audit, audit 831Bs and captives. And I, I applauded that. I think that was a really, really big, strong element that the IRS was doing because there were so many bad actors out there. Well, relatively speaking, not so many bad, bad actors. But because the IRS lost some um, some lawsuits, I guess, uh, they decided to pull back on that because they were, they've were they been losing lawsuits because I would say, one, because 831Bs are a viable way, if done right and correctly, it's a viable way for a business owner, again, to lower risk, uh, lower taxes. Now, also, also, you got to think about this. Congress, right? <laughs> this is incredible. Both sides of the aisle agree on captives. The Democrats like them because it helps farmers, right? The Republicans like them because it helps the wealthy business owner, right? And a, there's a lot of, uh, there aren't a lot of things in favor of being a business owner when it comes to laws, but captives do help business owners. So. Both sides of the aisle are coming together. Now, by the way, back in the old days, $1.2 million was the limit. Now, for 2024-25, it looks like the limit's going to be $2.8 million. So if you're a big, big, let's say a big revenue guy or revenue girl, whatever the case is, and you're making, I don't know, whatever, $200 million in a year, as an example, just pretending, right? You can put away $2.8 million in a captive to lower your risk. Right. Think about that. Two point eight million dollars. How much can you put away in a 401k? So this is almost like a really tax deductible pool, tax deferred pool, if you will. I'm not going to say it's exactly like that because it isn't. But you don't have to include employees in a captive or an 831B. That makes it nice. OK, so some people even market it as as a 401k, a certain 401k, because you get tax deferral. I won't go down that road. I don't agree with that. But what I would say is you do get tax deferral. You don't have to pay taxes on it as we speak now. When you pull the money out, that's when you do, right? And remember, when you get the money from when the, your company writes a check to the captive, you don't have to pay earnings. You don't have to pay taxes on it. So that's nice, right? But again, when you pull the money out, that's when you get taxed. So again, there are just some pretty pretty important elements to think about when looking at a, at a captive. Now, what's another thing you should really really think about? Um, when putting together a captive, you got to think about that captive manager, the group that brought you the idea, us here, you know, this introduction, you know, <laughs> this introduction, captive insurance and introduction. Hopefully it's going to help you to understand a little bit more about captives, how it can help you as a business owner. Now, if you need any help, please go to our website at vastsolutionsgroup.com. Again, vastsolutionsgroup.com. My name is Kenner French. 
um, an executive at vastsolutionsgroup.com. We are here to help you. We have a lot of tools, a huge number of tools at vastsolutionsgroup.com that can outline a little bit more and go into a little bit more detail about a captive. Now, really the true, the, 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 if you really think about the real steps for a captive, well, for one, get a hold of us or get a hold of any captive manager, any captive administrator, number one. Number two, usually what happens is there's a thing called a feasibility study. Feasibility study helps um, really the business owner to see if a captive will make sense. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. You need to make the determination. Really, usually the captive feasibility study is usually done with or by an actuary, maybe a tax attorney, right? Or maybe even a CPA or maybe a team of all of them. Because you need to make sure that you're not going to go down the road of putting together a captive and it not be viable for you. Sometimes you might have issues such as your background. You might not be able to get a, a captive because you have a background issue. Uh, you know, you can't get, no domicile will accept you. Hopefully that's not the case, by the way. Um, but if so, yeah, that's, that's one of the things you got to juggle to, you know, see if that's going to be an issue before you go down the road of setting up a captive. So hence the reason a feasibility study. Usually that'll let you know how much premium you can write as a check uh, to your own insurance company. And then, frankly, thereafter, you're putting together the captive insurance company. Now, that could take anywhere, depending on the circumstances, from beginning of the feasibility study all the way to the end. It could take as little as two weeks. Usually, it takes much longer than that. Or really, if you really think about it, to setting it all up, all the T's are crossed, I's are dotted. You know, sometimes it could take as much as six weeks, depends on the complexity of the scenario. Um, also, what I would say is on an ongoing basis, at least, and as I mentioned earlier, at least you have to meet with your captive administrator as a board, usually every quarter for the first year and thereafter every year. It's smart to continue to meet every single quarter. We pretty much mandate, we almost mandate our clients to um, have someone with from the company, from let's say, if you're the um, if you're the uh, owner in this case, usually we try to make sure for the first two years, someone meets with us quarterly. Depends on the circumstance. Every circumstance is different. Now, what I, I would also say, kind of in closing, this isn't for uh, the lighthearted. This is for this is for someone who's technical and really who has the wherewithal to have a cash outlay of really, if you think about it, you know, maybe as low as 300,000, but really 500,000 really makes sense, really make a dent as far as risk mitigation all the way up to, you know, someone who wants to put away $2.8 million. So you got to be relatively sophisticated or somehow you've come into some pretty good money. Now, we're here for you. Please stop by vastsolutionsgroup.com. We are here to at least kind of, you know, walk you through the process. Uh, so it's a little bit less pain, painless, but more than anything. So it's powerful to show you, and I keep saying it, lowering the risk, lowering the tax liability, wealth management tool, asset protection tool, and all the elements in between. Once again, it's Kenner French, it's been a huge pleasure. I'm so glad you have been a part of this vast cast because now you know and you've really hopefully understood what a captive insurance is because we've provided a captive insurance and introduction. Once again, it's Kenner French. I really, really am so glad you've spent the time with us now that you hopefully understand a little bit more about uh, really what is a captive insurance. Been a pleasure.